With Blueprint, sometimes what we want is a function or a node that takes in one input, does some internal logic, and then has a number of different outputs. Inside Blueprint, that's relatively easy to do because we can just do that with macros for the most part. We can have as many inputs as we need them to be, and we can set every single one of those inputs to be a execution pin. And the same thing here with the outputs. We can have as many execution pins as we want. But how do we set up something similar for a function in C++? Let's take a look at that today. We're going to make uh, something very simple that'll just show you the very basic setup of everything. So let's open up the C++ class for our test project. And there we're going to make a new function uh, for this. So we'll make this a U function which of course we will make Blueprint callable because we're going to be calling it from Blueprint. That's the whole point here. And then we're going to be adding some meta stuff. Important to set that with a capital M. Uh, so meta equals, and then we're going to put in some parentheses, and we're going to expand enum as execs. You can also do this as a bool, uh, but for more flexibility, we're going to make this as an enum equals, and then we're going to put in the name of the parameter that we're going to be looking for so in this case that will be output pins you can name this whatever you want of course then we can just make our normal function so in this case this will be a void check jumping is what we're going to be doing this is a little bit of a weird example but we'll get there eventually now we need to make an enum to have every single possible value of the branches that this is going to uh, be taking. So let's go up uh, here to the top of our file, and we're going to be uh, making a uenum of blueprint type. That'll be a enum class, and we'll name that something uh, starting with E, because it's going to be an enum that's actually required. And we'll call this jumping state or something like that. And it's going to inherit from the uint8. As a little aside, if you're wondering what this IDE is that I'm using, I'm using Rider uh, by JetBrains. There's a link down below in the description for a three month free trial of Rider or any JetBrains IDE. Rider specifically really works very well with Unreal Engine. That's why I use it. That said, uh, we can say this is our thing where we say, okay, we have a landed value, we have a going up value, and we have a going down value. And those really are the only three options uh, to do with jumping. I guess we also have the option that you're flying, no gravity being applied. We can check that. Now that we've made that, we can make that a input parameter for the check jumping functions that's going to have multiple output pins. So that's going to have E jumping state reference because it's going to be an output. When you want something to be an output, you can set it as a reference in your parameters and then it'll be an output in the actual blueprint node. Same goes for the execution pins in this case, which does mean that if you just do this, you can make multiple input pins. We'll revisit that in a moment as well. And then it is important to have the exact string that we're looking for here for the expand enum as execs, because it's going to be looking for a parameter with this exact name. And we're going to just implement that, generate a definition for it again, thanks to writer. And here we can just put in whatever logic that we want. So we'll get velocity, for instance, uh, and then we'll get specifically the Z velocity, and we'll save that as a temporary uh, float Z velocity equals that. And then we will check a couple of other things. So we'll also make a U character movement component uh, pointer real quick, and that'll be equal to get character movement, obviously, so just so that we can easily access it later i will call this charm of or character movement and then first things first we're going to check whether or not we are currently falling or not we can just do that with character movement is falling and we're going to put that in an if statement uh, of course because this will be the condition for what we're going to be doing next so if we are falling that means that we are not landed so we can now check hey this z velocity is that less than or equal to zero well, actually, let's just check less than because if it's equal to, we're not technically falling yet. And if that is the case, then we can start setting this output pins value to being whatever value corresponds to that. So that'll be E jumping state, in this case, going down. Else, 
we will be going up, obviously. If we're not going down, we're going up. There's only one way or the other. As long as we're falling, we're either going up or down. So we're going up in that case. If we are not falling, clearly, we are landed. So we can set output pins value to being the landed state. And before all that, uh, we can also put in a quick character movement movement mode. Let's wrap that in an if statement as well. And we'll just check whether or not we are uh, flying here as well. Because if we are flying, we obviously want to set this to, I think we had a uh, flying state as well, right? Flying. Now, it is important to note that these are not return statements in any way, shape or form. So if in any way in your code, in the logic that you're writing, you set something here and now one of these other statements also ends up being true, it's going to overwrite that. So if you want this to be where your function ends, you do need to manually add in those returns wherever you want that to end as well. But that also means that you can very easily just set up this logic of, hey, this is all the stuff that we are deciding for the output pins, and then we can do some actual code execution, running other functions, whatever we want to do in here as well, because none of this is actually going to end the function. So let's compile this and see what this looks like in Blueprint. Now, back in the Blueprint class, we can use the check jumping function and we can see it has one input, but then it has a landed, going up, going down and flying output. So let's just put this into event tick and we're just going to simply put some print strings in uh, for all of these just to show you. So we are, when we're here, we're going up and so on and so forth. Let me just add in these and then we'll go ahead and play through to show you how it works. And I suppose I might as well set up a uh, debug key as well, just to change the movement mode here. So we're just debug key F, I'll add in a flip-flop, uh, set movement mode. First time we press it, it's gonna be set to flying, and then the second time you press it, we're gonna be setting it to walking. And if we are at that moment falling, uh, it's going to immediately update to falling, just to show you that we can also like run that stuff. So you will see it says blended now, but when I start jumping up, it says going up, going down, landed, going up, going down, landed. Now, is this entirely useful? Uh, maybe, maybe not. It's more so an example of how to set up a node like this. And then if I press the F key, you can see that it's now set to flying because I am no longer walking or running or falling. I am now in a flying state. And I press F again, it's going to immediately go back to going up, down and landed. So that is how we can set up a node with multiple outputs, very simply like this. And of course, you can do this with much more complex logic and for much more useful stuff. Now, as I said, we also have the possibility to have multiple inputs. For a node like this, which is instant and not asynchronous or not latent, there's not a lot of point to doing that, but it does allow you to effectively like write a state machine in C++ and just condense it all down into one node. So if you really want, what you can do is we can have expand enum as exec, as execs, and we'll just make a new enum for this as well. So I'll just copy over this one and call this e input versions. And we can just call those like begin play, tick, and then maybe like overlap. And we can now write some logic based on which of those pins we use to enter this function and maybe have slightly different behavior for each one of those. So you could say, hey, if I enter through begin play, I only want to know whether or not I'm falling down. Like that's the only thing that I care about. So you can kind of filter things out if you wanted to. You could say, hey, uh, if we enter this through begin play, I only want to be able to exit through going up or going down or whatever. And through tick, we want to be able to go through all of them, no matter what. And if we enter through overlap, uh, we want to maybe only be able to go through the landed output pin, something like that, right? So you can do whatever you want with that. So in here, we can just add the input pins. Let's make sure we capitalize that just to make sure that uh, it looks good. Then add in a comma, and that is going to be looking for both input pins and output pins. It's going to arrow you out until you add in those input pins. So let's just add in the input pins, which will be the, not the E jumping state, actually, it will be the input versions. And this one will just not make a reference. So it'll be just that, and then we'll call that inputs pins and there we go so 
when we have that we now uh, also want to add that as a parameter of course in the function in the cpp file and we can now access this as just a value so we can check hey maybe the going down and going up we only really want to check when the input pins is equal to the overlap so we check input pin equal equal e inputs version overlap and now it won't be printing the going down and going up every single time on tick, only when we enter this node through the overlap input pin. Once again, let's compile and I will show you. As you can see, uh, the initial pin that existed uh, is now uh, erroring us out because it doesn't exist anymore. But we do have this begin play tick and overlap input pin uh, option. So we can put the tick into the tick. Then we can do begin play on begin play, I suppose. That doesn't really do anything and then on overlap so on actor begin uh, overlap is when we go through that and you will notice now that uh, let's allow this thing to generate overlap events real quick it already does fantastic so in theory i think uh, we can do this with a trigger box and you see this has landed but it doesn't actually update saying anything like uh, the going up or going down worth noting that that doesn't mean that it's not running on tick anymore it still is running every frame it's just not able to go through one of those output pins so what ends up happening is we check jumping we have an input pin and an output pin value we check all this stuff we're not flying uh, and then we check this stuff is falling okay that's true but the input pins is not through overlap so it's not able to assign the output value uh, one of these two values so it's just going to stick to the default value and the default value is just the first one in this list over here so it's always going to return as landed it has to go through one of the output pins no matter what we do this is not a latent node this is not an async node it has to go through one of them this is just very like basic logic so you could add like a non and you just not connect that up to anything if you wanted to for now, let's disconnect event tick just because it's getting a little annoying. So we're disconnecting the tick and it's still going to be able to do the begin play and the overlap. I just want to do that because it will show you the uh, overlap thing a little bit better. Uh, so it starts on begin play. It's at landed. And then when we go through here, it'll say landed because we overlapped with the trigger box. Uh, but we can also say, oh, we see going down when we overlap with that thing or, or going up rather. Now we're going down. And I suppose it is technically possible to also just like do this as flying because now I'm flying. And that's how you can take a single function that could be relatively simple and have it with multiple input pins and multiple output pins and use those two together to create whatever logic you want. One last little note that I do want to add is that if you try to call this within C++, uh, it is going to require you to put in these enums which is entirely possible that's entirely a thing that you can do but it's kind of pointless like the whole point of adding these expand enum access is that you're using this in blueprint so for the most part i would advise you to just worry about this being a blueprint thing and not play around too much with calling these functions in c++ itself anymore i don't think and for a quick little bit of context and where this might be useful is in my game here, I have a thing that spawns the same class over and over and over again for a amount of spawns. So like 10 spawns after each other, every single one spawns a new one, just a little bit in front of itself, right? And then we have a counter that goes down. Here in spawn next, I just have a, if amount of spawn is less than or equal to zero, we set the branches, which is the enum that I'm using for the exact output pins, to being last spawn so in blueprint what ends up happening is we have a line going into this node and then for the most part like the top exact pin is the default value and there's nothing there but then the last spawn pin that we have here via some other code that calls a delegate on the parent of this object to let it know that hey you just spawned your last thing you can go back to doing like your normal ai behavior again because it of the ai behavior as long as this attack is going on right so this is a much more generally useful uh, method to do it otherwise what you might do is make this a, a bool function instead and just return that as a bool 
But then every single time you need to use this function, you need to add in a branching node as well and like drag all kind of noodles all over the place, which if you just use this in one or two places, that is a quicker and easier way to set this up than making a specific enum for all this. But if it's a function that you're going to be reusing in a lot of ways, and especially if it has those multiple inputs and those multiple outputs both and they interact with each other and there's like a, a lot of logic happening there, uh, there's a lot more that you can do with that than just outputting a bool. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. A huge thank you to my cave student tier supporters, Earl Monteville Erno, and my cave digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, 